Welcome to a special edition of McGuire's Car Crazy. We recently lost one of the great icons of the car hobby, Carol Shelby. And today, we're taking a personal look back at this great friend who was actually the inspiration for producing this show. I've always loved cars. I've never lost that passion. This event is the epitome of a Cobra event. It just amounts to the greatest Cobra yeah. celebration of the time. These classic machines are now a memorial to the passion and creative genius of Carol Shelby for car guys all over the world. The passion just continues every day. We're about to meet some legendary racers and passionate car guys who love Carol and his amazing cars. The thing about this car is it's considered the most original 427 SC left in existence. Is that right? So get ready to celebrate two of the greatest car guy icons of all time, Carol Shelby and his incredible Cobra. You go just on for 50 years and you say, how lucky can you get? We travel the world to talk with men and women who are passionate car guys to find out what makes people emotionally connected to their cars. It's time to get to the heart of the car guy. This is Car Crazy. You're one of the inspirations for this show. We were sitting somewhere and you were telling me another one of your great stories. Yeah. And it crossed my mind how many millions of car guys would like to be sitting where I am right now listening to Carol Shelby tell me a story. So we've had so many great conversations through the years. And I thank you for, for thank inspiring you. me to do some things thank with some, that's perhaps some other that's people. That's nice of you, Barry. It's <laughs> always <laughs> wonderful to sit down with you. Growing up in Dallas, Texas, Carol joined the Army Air Corps right out of high school. By 19, he was satisfying his passion for speed as an ace pilot who became one of our top flight instructors. At war's end, he came home to race, eventually racing for Team Maserati and Aston Martin. In 1959, Carol drove the Aston Martin team straight into the winner's circle during the 24 hours of Le Mans. With all of his wins and huge respect he earned on the racetrack, his lifelong heart condition forced him to leave his race car driving behind to pursue a second passion, building race cars, creating the Shelby AC Cobra. On this day, Carroll's passion for building cars is being honored by a sea of Shelby devotees gathered here at the NHRA Museum in Pomona, California with every kind of Cobra and Shelby Mustang Cobra and Shelby Viper, performance enhanced by Carroll and bearing his signature. We're here with Sheriff John, I mean, uh, Len Park. <laughs> How you doing, Len? I am just great. Len is our curator for this event. Talk about this great mark, the history, Carol Shelby. You can articulate that better than anybody else here today. Well, I hope to, because I've been involved with Cobras as long as anybody here. Yeah. Ever since people have started racing in the vintage races, Cobras have always had a spot in the forefront. They have always been a good collector car. Again, only 1,000 built, People always want Cobras. The event is about 50 years of Cobra, and we are celebrating original yeah. 289 and 427 Think I can interview you? Wait a minute. <laughs> Cornelli Jones, everybody. How you doing? OK. I'm great, doing great. Fine. Good yeah. to see you. Thank you. We hang at all the neatest places, don't we? Isn't this great? This, I mean, this, this is our grand marshal. When you think of, of Cobras, you think of 1960s, yeah. and there is no better driver, period, in anything in the 60s than Parnelli He's Jones. Of anything. <laughs> it didn't matter where you started in the field, even if you well, started at the back. You're, you're determined you're going to win that race. When I first started racing, I had more desire than I did talent. <laughs> <laughs> I wrecked my car week after week. But if you're going to have more of one or the other, you got to have the right one. Yeah. Talk about your history with Shelby. And I was the Firestone race tire distributor, and Shelby was a good year to race tire distributor. And so we were really close friends, but we just couldn't race with each other. You know? yeah. We had yeah. to race against each other yeah. in most cases. Exactly. So we're going to get you out in the race course after a while, I think. Well, I get a chance to drive my King Cobra Absolutely. that I won the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Is that track. cool or what? Yeah. As the Cobras hit the track, I hop in with my friend Bob Stockwell in his fiery Red 64 for this once-in-a-lifetime trip down memory lane. Coming up, we take a break from the track to chat with legendary racer Bob Bondurant and check out the most original Cobra still on the road. This is really good. One morning I said, all I've ever wanted to do is drive race cars, so why don't I just do it? Let's see if I can make a living. Three years later, I was driving for a factory team in Europe.
Daytona Coupes that won the world championship just sold for over $15 million. Yeah, right, one car. And everybody says to me, why did you sell those cars for $4,000 <laughs> a piece? I said, last year's race car was worthless right. back then. That's right. And I said, beside yeah, that, I needed the 4000 Yeah, yeah, man. We're here at the Wally Park's NHRA Museum of Pomona, California, celebrating this great mark, 50 years of the Cobra, and the man behind it, my dear friend, Carroll Shelby. For years, Carroll Shelby was happiest when he was tearing around a track. Always fighting his lifelong heart condition, he would pop a couple of nitroglycerin pills and keep on winning races, whether it was in an Aston, Maserati, or a Formula One car. This is what Carroll loved, and even today, his legendary performance on the track is inspiring the next generation of race car drivers. Bob Stockwell and I are still cruising the track here at the 50th anniversary celebration of Carroll's iconic Cobra. And as much fun as this is, we want to take a moment to talk about the Cobra's profound effect on the car hobby. Meet Bob Stockwell, the president of the Cobra Club of Orange County, where I hang out. And uh, talk about your history with the Cobras right quick, because you go way back. Yeah, I've I been mean, way back. <laughs> racing for probably 40 plus years and, yeah. and uh, uh, all across the country and uh, Daytona. Yeah. And I, I was able to win a national championship in 1968 at Riverside and feel very, very fortunate yeah. to be able to continue yeah. uh, to run it. And another highly accomplished racer and avid Shelby enthusiast is my good friend, Bob Bondurant. Your professional racing career started, what year was that? Oh, good Lord, it started in 1955. I yeah. bought a Morgan Plus Four, and then I graduated up from there. Right, And right. then uh, TR2 board and started winning my class, but I wanted to win overall. And, yeah. and then you had this guy that got you off the Corvettes, came yeah. into your life. Carol, Carol, Carol somebody? Shelby. Oh, Carol Shelby, yeah, that's who it was. He did. <laughs> and, uh, no, you, you had great competition with Carol on the track. Oh, I did? Oh, yeah. He was fantastic race driver. So then one day you get a call. Oh, I get a for call from Carol. He said, "What are you doing?" <laughs> Such and such a weekend. I said, "Well, nothing." So you're driving Ken Miles Cobra at the Continental Divide. Never wow. uh, sat in a Cobra yet. Wow. And uh, ended up winning the race. What's the best thing about the car hobby? Can you can you capture one thing or a couple things? When you see all of the pressures that society puts on families today and people. For them to have something like this that can take some of that pressure off, I think that it's just fabulous. Along with all the great racing personalities and industry icons, let's not forget that we're surrounded by some of the most beautiful Cobras in existence. So let's head inside with our show curator, Lynn Park, to check out a few of these legendary Cobras. El Cid was a Dragon Snake, one of the five factory cars they built. And this particular car was retained by Carroll Shelby. Not really, he lost control of it for a while and then bought it back. Yeah. But he had this car and it turned out to be the fastest of the five Dragon Snakes. It ran at 1086, 128 miles. That is wow. fast wow. for a 2200 pound car yeah. with no traction. Incredible, at that, at that era. Exactly. When we come back, we'll take a closer look at some amazing Cobras and discover that these cars don't just run on gas. It's their stories that keep them going. We built that first car in 90 days. And of course, we went down to Daytona the first time, and we were so fast, we just disappeared from yeah, Ferraris. Yeah. Yeah. Stick around. The biggest thing that went on inside of Carroll Shelby is that last five laps at Le Mans. I heard more transmission problems. I heard the engine going away on me. We won that race, and it's the greatest thing that ever happened to me in racing, probably outside of uh, building my own cars that won the world championship. Yeah. failures in building cars than successes. But as you look, as I look back on it, I don't care, it's a failure. You learn so much in a failure that's right. that to me it's not a failure. It's about failing forward. And that's what you've done so very, very well. It doesn't bother me. It's always, it's, it just kept on going. We're back with more of McGuire's Car Crazy, honoring 50 years of the Shelby Cobra and the man who made it. And of course, this car was no ordinary car. The Cobra quickly proved to the world that it was a force to be reckoned with. Certainly, no one ever expected the AC Ace two-seater would become the supercar of its day. But time and time again, the Cobra was staking claim in the winner's circle. And then Carroll went a step further, adding a Ford 427 into an already powerful machine. And a ferocious new Cobra was born. 
We're here with Anthony Busalis with a couple of Cobras have seen some serious competition. Tell us about these brute cars. They're competition versions. Shelby only built about 53 total competition, big block 427s. But the thing about this car is it's considered the most original 427 SC left in existence. Is that right? They all get restored, wow. and this wow. one is natural. It's just the way it was. So this is an SC. So an SC, it's, semi it's street legal and yet they could race on the streets. Barely, 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 barely <laughs> street legal. Carol, you're really amongst all your children out here. What, what does it feel like to be amongst uh, so much of your offspring here today and seeing all these people enjoying them so uh, much? Barry, at this point in my life, to still be here, to see all of these cobras, all of these enthusiastic people, and so many of the little grandchildren and great-grandchildren named Shelby. <laughs> Even though the total run was limited, there were many different versions of the cobra that made their way to the streets, and occasionally, the drag strip. Of course, cobra is a great road car, but five of them were specifically created for the drag strip. Steve and Giuliano know something about that. Tell us about the Dragon Street. Yeah, I sure do. Uh, Shelby American offered a, a race package uh, for quarter mile. They had tremendous success in all of the road racing they decided to give a quarter mile a shot. A dad ordered it for two teenage sons. And uh, really? they wanted, they wanted <laughs> oh a yellow car goodness. to match their Thunderbird. They ended up ordering this, and they ordered it oh with the uh, Stage 3, goodness. which was Weber's and all kinds of aluminum stuff under the hood. Pretty amazing that two 17-year-old boys oh, were racing this in so York, Pennsylvania. So he bought it for them specifically to go racing. Yeah, dad had uh, hidden the stands one day and saw them racing a Corvair. Oh. And they didn't do very well. <laughs> so he did some research and said, well, what what car can I get these kids that'll just kick Great. everybody's butt? He went Man, for the ultimate. Boy, he did. But Carol always had a way of expanding the boundaries of the ultimate. And his constant drive to create an even better machine led to one particular car that would take the racing world by storm, the one and only Daytona Coupe. Well, the Daytona Coupe was a project that I'd had in mind for some time. The basic design for the car came from uh, some German aerodynamic studies that were done in the late 30s. And of course, the war came along, and all that stuff was bombed flat sure. and disappeared. Sure. But there were some technical papers that were left over. Mm. And when the Army went in over there, copied these papers, and sent them back to the US auto industry, and I found them in the GM library. Come on. And Shelby came up with the idea, said, you know, I want to go over to Europe. How can we make the cars faster? And I said, well, we're not going to get any more horsepower. We got 385 out of these 289s right now. There's some free horsepower in aerodynamics. So I drew it up, and then what happened, I showed it to everybody in the shop, and they said, that's the ugliest looking stuff I've ever seen. <laughs> we built that first car in 90 days. Yes, yes. And of course, we went down to Daytona the first time, and we were so fast, we just disappeared from yeah, the Ferraris. Yeah. Yeah. After the break, we'll take a look at what could possibly have been the fastest and coolest rental car ever. And then we jumped the Ford ship to check out Carol's 1990s version of the Cobra. You're well, always cooking we're, on something. We're yeah. working on uh, a new contract for five years with Ford. Are you really? Yes. Uh, so at 86 years old, to be working on a five-year contract is a lot of people are laughing at me. I'm, I'm serious. Is, is there a penalty if you cancel early? <laughs> Can't go horizontal. <laughs> I'm just thankful every day. Every <laughs> day. The man upstairs that we both know takes yeah, care of us right. and has taken wonderful care really? of me. And the beat goes on. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy. Well, we're here today in Pomona, California, celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Cobra. Let's also remember some of Carol's other contributions to the car hobby, like the amazingly fast Daytona Coupe. And when it comes to Mustangs, Carol took the iconic pony car to entirely new levels with the GT350s and 500s. The infamous Dodge Viper wouldn't be a supercar if Lee Iacocca hadn't looked to Carroll for insight and innovation. Shelby even took a shot at his own ground-up build with the rare and incredible Series 1. So let's catch up with a few passionate Shelby owners who can introduce us to these absolutely awesome cars. Behind me is a Shelby Mustang GT350H. This is a rare car. Dan Swan is going to tell us all about it. Cool car, my friend. Thanks. GT350H. Let's get that right. The H. <laughs> the H stands for Hertz. Yes. You're going to rent this car in 1966 from a counter at the airport. Now, I these, did. You did. I know many times. <laughs> well, you know what you paid for this car? It was $17 a day yeah. and 17 cents a mile. Uh, I was going to say 10 cents a mile, but 17 cents a mile. OK, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Can you believe it? I jumped for that in a hurry. Every time they had one, I You I must have been an executive, because this was <laughs> usually sold 
as a riddle to people who came into the airport yeah. on business trips. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And a bit for us, like, how cool is this? I can have a Shelby Mustang <laughs> in my business so, as I was making calls around, you know? Wow. Great. I'm getting so many people like yourself yeah. who walk by today and says, you know, I rented this car. <laughs> yeah. oh, I wish I, I could have got that, that car. car. <laughs> yeah. yeah. From top of the line rental cars to helping design a new top model, but this one didn't fall under the Ford badge. Well, you know about the Cobras, you know about the GTs, but did you know about Carol Shelby's influence on the Viper? <laughs> Michael Holmes is going to give us that story. This is a Carol Shelby edition. Yeah, he did yeah, this with a guy named yeah. Dan Fitzgerald. Right. Um, they did six Generation 1 cars. That's with the side pipes. It's the only blue one on the planet. They made five white with the blue stripes. Yeah, they're all white. One blue with the white right, stripes. Right. This is that blue one. Yeah, and you talk about a little bit uh, Carol Shelby and uh, the relationship with Ike Coca and Tom Gale and all right, those guys. Right, that went all the way back to the beginning of Mustang. <laughs> That's right. And then he got involved when he was with Ike Coca at Chrysler. Yeah. They wanted to come out with a 1990 version of the of the Cobra, so they developed the uh, what they called the Viper. And now we know the rest of the story. Little oh, do they yeah. know. As I watch the people come up just mesmerized or getting your signature, and you treat each one like they're the only one that the, that's talking to you for the day, and I just so admire you for doing that. Well, thank you, Perry. I know a few people that push kids away and say, kid, I don't sign autographs. I think it's a disgrace because that's the future of our business, and I, I consider it. How lucky can you get that they ask you for it? <laughs> After Carroll had worked for major manufacturers for years, he finally decided it was time to go out on a limb and build his own car from scratch. Meet Sandy Bettelman, our resident expert on the Series 1 Cobra, and uh, give us the history on, on this particular series. There's so many iterations of the Cobra and Shelby name. This one is really interesting. Shelby built this in 1999. Yeah. He built a total of 249, and in fact, this model is the only model Shelby ever designed himself. This is yeah, all Shelby. Up. It's right. for ground up the whole thing. Yes, it's all carbon fiber, aluminum frame, extremely lightweight, 2,600 pounds, and unlike most of his other cars, this has an Oldsmobile Aurora engine. It's the engine that the Oldsmobile yeah. Indy race team used yeah, in the mid-90s. Yeah, right. Shelby claimed when it was produced in 99, it was the world's fastest production car, top speed of 185. I didn't experience it at that speed, but I was on a rally one time, and every one of us had our own stories about Carol passing us on a, on a, on a high-end turn, you know, where it's drop-offs and everything else. And he went by like a Sunday drive, of course, you know, in this car, and he just went, he was just like, wow. It is machine, and it is the man yeah. as, as well. Yeah, it's and amazing. Both things live on in this car. Coming up, we'll take a closer look at Shelby America then and now and talk with Roger Sorrell about Carroll's new 1,000 horsepower Mustang. You can't miss this. Cobra is at the top of the list out of all the cars of all time. How does that make you feel? You can probably imagine how proud that makes me feel, how lucky it makes me feel, too, how lucky I am to even be here. You're kind of the bionic man. You do have these uh, replacement parts that you can oh, give yeah. the kids. I've got so. uh, transplanted heart, transplanted kidney from my wonderful son, Mike, that, that uh, saved my life four years ago last January. And uh, as lucky as I am, you have to put it back. Every day's Christmas for me, Gary. <laughs> it sure is. We're back with more of McGuire's Car Crazy. Looking back over the last 50 years and longer, it's staggering to think of how widespread Carroll Shelby's influence was on the car hobby. His time collecting checkered flags as a race car driver, giving the world the Cobra, the Daytona, the Viper, the Series 1, and the thousands of autographs he signed as he tirelessly gave his time to promote the car hobby all over the world. We're here with Roger Sorrell, the director of sales at Shelby American, who continues to bring out the dreams and aspiration of one Carol Shelby. I mean, you guys are still doing it. We're still doing Even it today. Even this last week, you brought out a new car. Shelby 1000. Shelby 1000. I can't imagine what the 1000 stands for. It has to relate to the horsepower. <laughs> really? It sure does. It sure does. The passion just continues every day. Wow. And Carol's always pushing us for something yeah. more. 50th anniversary. 50th anniversary of Shelby American as a Shelby company. Shelby American as a company. And this is the latest yeah. offering right here. Yeah. Yeah. Give us kind of a rundown of the history for those, through those 50 years. Give us some snapshots. Some oh, snapshots. CSX 2000, yeah. the first Cobra ever. Yeah. And then from Incredible. there, you get into the FIA cars, the Daytona Coupes, the 427 Cobras. Then you get into the Ford piece, the real 
the GT40s. Who could no. forget that no. in the history of Le Mans? Oh, my goodness. Uh, no. Moving forward, you had the legacy of the GT350. It is bigger than the machinery. The, the cars are great, but there is an aura, a mystique. Can you explain what makes it so very special? It's a deep-rooted passion in these people. There's something about the man himself yeah. that people have yeah. admired and some have aspired to. And we see that, we feel that. Yeah. Yeah. We see yeah. grown yeah. people just brought to tears because we've provided them with a dream. Okay, you're certifiable. All, All right. righty. Certifiably car crazy. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. <laughs> I Pleasure. love your passion. Carrying on Carol Shelby's passion has always been and will always be the number one goal of Shelby America. And if history has taught us anything, the Cobra will never go out of style. The timelessness of the Cobra in its style and design, this is the way it hits the eye, it amazes me. Look at any other 50-year-old car, and it looks 50 years old. Yeah, oh, absolutely. A Cobra absolutely. is timeless. It, it looks in style today. Yeah. Shelby's accomplishments will forever live on as symbols of his love and devotion to the car hobby. Just ask Hao Tai Tang what he thinks. Carol Shelby is your consultant in building these cars. I mean, is there anybody better for that role? It's a great country. You got a, a Vietnamese immigrant working with an 83-year-old <laughs> Texas chicken farmer that built performance cars. <laughs> now that's America. <laughs> be thankful that we're here. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Just be thankful the old man's taking that's care right. of it for some reason. We Sorry. need you. And uh, well, thank it's you. Such, it's a, you just embody what the car hobby is all about. All right. Thank you, Mary. So it's really great. Always, always great. Good, always good, good to talk to you. Pray for you. Continue to pray you. for you. Thank you. I appreciate the prayers. Carol Shelby was a complex guy. Always the hard driving, bigger than life force to be reckoned with. Doing whatever it took to be the winner. In the shop, on the track, in the boardroom, and in the courtroom. No one wanted to compete against Carroll Shelby at any level. And yet at the same time, he was a fiercely loyal friend, highly sensitive to injustice and the needs of others, who warmed every room with his presence and his great smile. Always thankful to God for giving him one more day to live, and then living it to its fullest counting his friends as his greatest treasure. His immense accomplishments made him a legend in his own time. No one has had a greater influence on the car hobby, and no one will be more greatly missed than my friend, Carol Shelby.